was making $7.50 an hour. So because I didn't have a CPA upon starting, I did not get the bonus. Hey you guys, welcome back to an Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. This is going to be a coffee chat because I'm about to expose myself. So for those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Nicole and on my channel I talk about all things career, faith, and lifestyle. So if you're into that kind of content, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. So last year I did this video where I shared with you guys how much I made as an intern in public accounting. So I thought that I would come back on here a year later and expose myself again and share with you guys how much I made as a staff accountant and just share a little bit of my accounting journey and public accounting hopefully this helps you guys who are about to start your jobs maybe you guys are starting in public accounting at the end of august or september october whatever it may be or even next year's busy season so this is probably the video for you or if you're just nosy and want to be all up in my business then you can stick around and watch too so go ahead grab your coffee so that i can just go ahead and spill my life away on the internet yeah. all right so if you guys have been keeping up with me for a while then you've been following my accounting journey I'm gonna have the playlist for you guys make sure you guys check it out but I started working in public accounting officially at the age of 22 so that's been a couple of years you know I was a 22 year old brand new to this corporate life and I was making $55,000 a year. That was my salary my very first year. So because I didn't have a CPA upon starting, I did not get the bonus that other people got when they started working with their CPA. So word of advice, get your CPA out of the way before you start working in public accounting if you can, or at least try to get most of your exams done before you start so that way when it's like your first I guess like your first couple of months you're just wrapping up your CPA and then you get your bonus so I just started on a $55,000 salary and y'all this was back in what 20 like 2017 2018 ish so that was good money for somebody coming out of college you know i was used to making 750 an hour to making a whole salary you know getting a paycheck two times a month faithfully like that was me becoming a big girl <laughs> So yeah, I was making $55,000 a month during my first year in public accounting for Big Four and I was in Houston. So obviously the markets are different and we're in 2021 now so I don't know how the salaries have changed. Um, y'all can research it or talk about it amongst yourselves. But that was like back in 2017, 2018, I lived in Houston, Texas at the time. So that's the market that I was in. That's how much I was getting paid. I know people who worked in New York, um, who worked in New York or people in LA who obviously made a little bit more than what I was making in Houston, Texas. But that was pretty much my salary. And y'all, it was so amazing to be able to have money coming to you every 15th and every last day of the month, y'all. That was a blessing. Like, my bank account was always looking right. <laughs> and of course, when you're coming out of college, like, you're not used to making that kind of money. Well, maybe you are. I don't know. But I wasn't used to making that kind of money. I didn't really grow up in a setting that people talked about salary, people talked about finances. So I really had to figure it out on my own and come to think of it $55,000 was not a lot like or is not a lot just in with living cost of living and such so that's kind of the next thing that I'm gonna get into what was my living situation like my very first month um, that was also when my husband and I were like finalizing our whole wedding and such so we were saving money for that he was still out, he was living in Lubbock to wrap up school and I had moved to Houston, Texas. So I was living with a friend at the time um, and I was just renting out a room at her house. So that worked out pretty well because it allowed me to save pretty much like two and a half months 
yeah like about two and a half months worth of my salary i was able to put all of that pretty much in savings to help prepare for my uh like my husband and i getting our own place so that was such a blessing uh for that and then of course when i was living with her i was also very close to the downtown office of the firm that i worked for so i didn't really spend too much on gas i didn't spend too much on food because i was pretty much just feeding myself so i was able to save a lot of my salary upon me starting and then obviously like when my husband and i um they got married and stuff we moved into our own place we were we were renting a house because renting a house did end up being cheaper at the time than renting an apartment um and that was due to the time frame of looking for an apartment when you're looking for an apartment in off season time you miss out on all of the deals and all of the specials or you're gonna live in an apartment in a nice so nice in a not so nice area or like one of the cheaper like the cheaper apartments that have like roaches and other kind of bugs and infestations that i was not gonna deal with so we rented a house we had found a good deal and it just worked for our situation at the time the con of that was having to drive drive to work it was a little further uh driving to work and driving to my to clients because if y'all live in Houston, if you guys have been to Houston, y'all know Houston traffic is no joke. The $55,000 a year salary did help me a lot. It helped with paying the bills. It helped with paying my rent. It helped with putting money in savings. So yeah, it was not bad, but y'all it's not enough. <laughs> A big difference between being an intern and you're getting paid hourly so you have opportunity to make overtime to then becoming a full-time staff that you obviously are not making hourly money so anything that you work overtime like that's just that that's a personal problem at the end of the day you're getting paid a set salary so that was something that was a little bit different than when i was an intern so like you're i didn't even if i would work uh like even if i would work over 40 hours i wasn't getting that extra time and a half my salary was set and then on top of that they're taking away um like you're being deducted your federal your federal taxes and shout out to texas for not taking state taxes i missed that about texas okay um because these new york taxes are not cheap okay new york be be i don't know like they try to make us poor but um in texas all i have all i had to pay was my federal taxes and then of course my health care um at the time i was no longer under my parents health insurance um so i had to get my own health care and benefit coverage obviously so paying for like life insurance health insurance dental vision um and then putting money aside in my 401k for retirement you know like putting all of that aside so obviously like you're still you're making decent money but once they take all of those deductions yeah so that is like adulting you know that's just a part of adulting um so an advice that i would give to you guys with your salary or coming into um like the big four public accounting space if you're in a position that you can live with a roommate to save money i would go ahead and do that um even if it's just for like short term go ahead and live with somebody save money another thing that i would suggest if you know that you're going to live in that city long term go ahead and invest and buy a house either buy a house or buy a townhouse buy a condo buy something and then get roommates that can pay you rent and essentially you be their landlord and like usually in the public accounting space it's easy for you to find roommates who are working either in the same firm as you or who are working in a different firm but you guys like can all live together and stuff and be on the same schedule that is something i would recommend if i was single if i was not married obviously like engaged or getting married around that time that i started working that's what i would have done i would have purchased property and i would have just like um gotten a roommate or two so that they could pay me rent and that would help pay mortgage and that would help save a lot of my salary as well so that is an advice that n not too many people are going to give to you so uh, please take that into consideration i think that that just it makes it easier on you as well so like you're still getting that roommate life but you are investing your property owner like that is so good and of course you're making salary so the bank is going to look at that as a positive that is something that 
I would advise for you guys to do. A couple of tips, remember, obviously, like whatever salary you're gonna be starting with, just create a budget already. Like I talk about budgeting all the time. Come up with a budget, come up with a game plan. If you can live at home, do it. Live at home for like six months, three to six months, just to save as much as you can. And then, and then go ahead and live out on your own, get your own place. If you can live with roommates, great. Or if you're getting married or if you're in a relationship, then go ahead and get your own place, preferably buy a house. I wish I would have done that. Um, please get your CPA, hopefully, or get most of your CPA exams passed prior to you starting your big four job. I think that's going to help it's going to help you financially with you getting that bonus and it's also going to take a burden off of you so that way you're not you're not studying while working as well because studying and working is hard that is why i still have yet to pass the cpa but that's a whole nother video coming up um things you're gonna have to be mindful of is is lunches when you are working like are you gonna be eating out every day with COVID I don't know how that's gonna play out but sometimes like your team is nice enough where your manager or partner will take you guys out to lunch at least like once a week um, and obviously if you're on a client site depending on where you are maybe like you can you can use your company credit card to buy your lunches and that's reimbursed and that's okay but definitely be keeping in mind like you're gonna have to pack your lunches if you're working in downtown of anywhere you need to pay for parking so having money for parking or a parking pass obviously you're getting Yes. Um, so I think my cell phone bill was covered by my firm so I didn't really have a cell phone bill which was a plus and a lot of things were reimbursed as well and then you got like different perks such as for um, like for fitness equipment if you bought fitness equipment or different types of things like they would reimburse you because that's a part of the health and wellness program that the firm that I worked for had so different things like that could help you but just be mindful of your budget be mindful of what you're gonna be spending on um, try to create some kind of like inventory list of what you plan on spending on and also calculate how far you're going to be living to your office because that can also be a blessing in disguise if you live within a certain radius of your firm and you have to go to a client that's further than that you get your mileage reimbursed automatically so that was something nice um, that I really enjoyed getting my mileage reimbursed especially when I would go to clients that were really far like such as clients that were near um, that were in Tumball in Texas in Houston Texas so like Tumball or like past the airport or near the near um, near Bush Intercontinental Airport whenever I would go to clients down that way um, if I would ever go to Louisiana obviously that's being reimbursed um, so those are some ways that like you get money out of public accounting so definitely be mindful of that and just plan strategically because all of that could work out in your favor that was like my first year and then i did i had left public accounting and then when i came back i worked in mid-tier and i did make a little bit more than what i made my first year in wisconsin i was able to negotiate my salary i think i've talked about negotiating salary before but if you have any specific questions let me know but um but still expenses were the same where like had to pay rent had to pay my bills you know grown-up things so that obviously like i thank god my salary has come a long ways since you know but obviously as you progress your salary goes up and i think it's something that i did want to share not to put myself out there like that but just in case like somebody is trying to figure it out hopefully this video helps them so i hope you guys enjoyed being in my business for a little bit and learning how much i made at in public accounting um let me know other questions or other types of videos you guys want me to make and i will go ahead and do that for you guys don't forget to subscribe if you've gotten this far please go ahead and subscribe to my channel i would love to have you here and i'll see you in my next video